Tonight, both Democrats and Republicans will have the opportunity to show America whether they stand with a president who is defying the will of the voters or with the millions of Americans who want a safe and legal immigration system. This point of order is targeted not to the entire omnibus, but specifically to the DHS funding that the president has announced will be spent unconstitutionally. At a time when Republicans should be all about the midterm celebration, they find themselves in more serious discourse than at any time in recent memory. A possible 2016 presidential candidate at odds with almost everyone in the party, and even some lifelong members of the GOP seem willing to walk away from the team and consider alternatives. Okay, his opinions are heard across the American radio dial, now via the USA Radio Network. A hardcore conservative who refuses to back down, Steve Dace joins the Midpoint Conversation. Steve, good to see you again. Good to be back. Thank you. Here we go, Steve. We have to now decide this because let's be fair. Here's how people look at Ted Cruz. Either he is a guy who is standing by his principles and doing exactly what the people want him to do, or else if you talk to some people in the, in the party, he's a whack job right now. He's completely off the reservation and it's going to hurt everything that the Republicans are trying to do. Put it together for us, Steve. I think if you went outside of the 202 area code and asked anybody who's to the right of Harry Reid, uh, what they think of Ted Cruz. You'd probably get a dramatically different opinion uh, than you would get within the 202 area code uh, where uh, many of us uh, operate uh, and conduct politics. Uh, I really think uh, the angst about Ted Cruz is, uh, is really relegated only to the ruling class. Out here in the cheap seats, you know, I live in the Midwest, and out here in flyover country, he gets standing ovations. He's Elvis Presley. He's the Beatles on Ed Sullivan show. He's a rock star. Why? Because he's doing this stuff that many of us have thought, you know, if I ever got a job like U.S. Senator and I had a chance to speak my mind, to find out where people really stood, to actually do some good for the country and not give a wit with the left wing media or anybody else that's destroying the country has to say, this is what I would do. And he's doing absolutely all of it which is why out here he is getting palm branches inside the 202 area code that is threatening to do what Tojo, what the Nazis, what the jihadists, what the Redcoats, what the Civil War could not do, destroy America. They hate him, and that's because he's a symbol. He represents the very uh, people in the, in the working class and in, in the middle class uh, in everyday America that the ruling class disdains. Hang on a sec, Steve, though, because when you start bringing Nazis and other people into this here, we have to stop a little bit. Are you then saying that everybody who is against Ted Cruz is part of those, and are you going to lump them in with those groups that you're saying are looking to destroy America? What I'm saying is there are people that have tried to destroy America from the outside and never been able to do it because culturally we've been too strong. We, pr we produced too good of an economy. Our value system was too strong that bound us together. We always rose to the occasion. But if you look at what happens to most great civilizations, they're usually undone from within. And this is what Lincoln warned about, the feckless ruling class, governing class within. And that's exactly what these people are. I'm sure they think that what they're doing while they're lining their pockets is what's best for America. But out here, the rest of us who do the vast majority of living, dying, and bill paying in this country, we have an entirely different view. All right, so I'm going to play devil's advocate here. All the Republicans, are not all, that's wrong, but a lot of them do seem to be against him right now. And as a matter of fact, the spending bill issue basically helped the Democrats get some appointments taken care of and gave them plenty of time. So there's people going, wait a minute, Ted, you did the Democrats a favor. So doesn't he go overboard sometimes? And wasn't this really the wrong time to do things? If you believe that Harry Reid wasn't going to shove these nominees down Republicans' throats during a lame duck session, then you probably believe it's a great idea for Mitt Romney to run for president a third time, too. I think I've heard that conventional wisdom from inside the 202. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. It's a bunch of whining, crybaby Republicans who are upset that Cruz has ripped their fig leaf off their nether regions and exposed they have no clothes. That he has done in, less, in more than a year, in just over a year, what most of these guys have been unwilling to do for the last couple of decades. And that's actually fight for the country. And the more they hate on him like this, they're growing him even stronger. That's the beauty of this that they don't understand. It's like they're a dog whistle to the patriots out here in the grassroots. Hey, if you're wondering who it is that really threatens the system come 2016, here's your guy. I mean, if I was running Ted Cruz 2016, my opening commercial would be just a montage of all the haterade and trolling from the ruling class and let them endorse me for me because those people are absolutely hated. Are you by okay? So I got about 20 seconds left then. Are you saying then that if you're a patriot in America, America, then you are behind Ted Cruz and the Patriots of America are the people who will, in your opinion, put Ted Cruz in the White House in 2016 if that's what he wants. I think he's on the road 
to what it would take for him to actually win the presidency. Who knows? He may fall off. We've been disappointed before, but right now, we're cheering him on. Is he the only one then, in your opinion, the only one who can get it done? Well, you know, it's the Christmas season, I'm a, I'm a, and I'm a Christian. The only, the ever only one was born in a manger, so he's not the only one. But right now, he seems to be the best one. All right, Steve Dace now on the USA Radio Network. A pleasure to have you back on the show, my friend. Congratulations, good luck, and if we don't talk again, a Merry Christmas, Steve. Same to you. Thank you. All right, short break, and we're joined by the Reverend Jesse Jackson to deal with how he intends to bring a racially charged America back together, as some believe he is part of the problem instead of the solution. And he is someone people believe, who needs to speak out in favor of peace as loudly as possible. Midpoint will continue.